So now we are also. So I'm accepting all the students. <clears throat> Right. Good day. Good day. Good evening to everyone and your students and colleagues. Welcome to the town hall session. Yet another town hall session with students hosted by the university leadership and uh, uh, departments. Uh, <clears throat> welcome to this session. Uh, the session is being recorded as usual and will be posted on the homepage of the offices of registrar. Uh, we will also uh, make an accordingly accordingly an announcement to all students. Uh, this is going to be uh, a one hour and 30 minute long session, uh, and I hope we will uh, finish it by 7.30 p.m. Uh, we'll start uh, with the, uh, the, the questions uh, that we received from the students prior to this town hall meeting. And I would like to thank uh, all the students who, who, who posted their questions onto that Google Sheet. So we'll walk through those questions posted. Uh, and the leadership members, along with the management members, uh, will uh, provide the answer to those questions. Uh, hopefully, we can make it uh, in 30, uh, 40 minutes. Sorry. For some reason it was stopped. Um, so, yeah, uh, after which uh, we will uh, begin the QA session, QA session with the students. Students can uh, drop their question into the chat box, which is now disabled for, for students. Uh, and, or, uh, as usual, they can raise their hands. Uh, I will, uh, admit, they can unmute themselves and address the questions to the leadership and management. <clears throat> uh, Rebecca Carter, uh, General Director for Student Progress, will moderate uh, the uh, questions through the questions posted uh, in that Google Sheet. So I'll now turn it over to uh, Rebecca. Thank you. Thank you, Elzas. Uh, welcome to our to our second regular spring 2022 um, town hall meeting with students. We're going to keep these up at least for the next two to three weeks and as needed afterwards. Um, let me say one thing. Uh, one question that was asked right off the bat is. Uh, why are all of these uh, on Tuesday evenings? Some students can't be here uh, because they're in class. Well, any night that we have it, some student will be in class. That's why we record them. So, um, and that's uh, one, we record them too. We a lot, we will we'll send out the Google Sheet so that people who can't be there can ask questions there. Um, it's uh, nothing's perfect. If we do it another night, they can't do it, then somebody else can't do it. So we're staying with Tuesday nights at six o'clock. Um, tell your friends or whatever to send their questions with you or to post them on the Google spreadsheet every week when it comes out. Nothing's perfect here. So that's how we're gonna do. Okay, like I said, we're gonna start with, we're, all of your questions clustered into about four categories. We're gonna take them in clusters. Um, the first cluster is academics. We're not reading every one of the questions out loud, but the provost and vice provost 
for Academic Affairs will answer them because many of them were the same. So I'm going to turn this over to the provost, vice provost, uh, for the first, which will deal with the academics overall. School specific questions, I'll be calling on the deans to talk. So, uh, Provost Dottie or Loretta, over to you. Well, let me let me just say a word of welcome, and then I hand it over to Loretta. Uh, good evening, dear students. Uh, Kylie Kish, Bashan Ugas Kylie Kish, to everybody. Uh, thank you for joining us this evening. We um, we had one, we had a town hall last week, and as uh, Ms. Rebecca Carter said, uh, we'll try to have this every week for the next couple of weeks until this, until maybe we start holding biweekly. But uh, as much as possible. We want to keep the communication lines with students and staff and faculty open. We had a, a, a town hall meeting with faculty, faculty and staff last week, and we'll have one again next week for the faculty and staff. So overall, the communication line, we want to make sure that it's open. You can ask questions. We can give you answer. We can also ask questions that we want to get answers to also, just to know how best we serve our, our community uh, from the leadership point of view. Uh, hopefully the classes have started for many of you and the, question, the answers today is to tell you what exactly is going to happen over the course of the semester with respect to classes, both online and offline and uh, specific uh, classes we have to defer to schools because they make the best judgment in terms of how the classes will be conducted, whether they are in the lab, the classes online, or classes in small seminar groups. With that, I'll stop and just say welcome again to the new semester. We've started classes already. We should the best of the semester and uh, but be, be assured that we're here to help you. Our job is to make sure that if everybody works hard, you'll be successful. Okay, Loretta, please say yeah. Okay, thank you. And a warm welcome to all of our students. I'd just like to summarize a few of the broad principles that the university is applying as we accelerate our move to in-person teaching. And a lot of the questions that we've received um, are to do with individual specific cases. I can talk about general ways we're responding to those cases, but as Ade just mentioned, I would recommend that for obviously for your specific case, speak to your school. Your dean has got very school specific solutions to the questions that you've raised. But let me just begin with a couple of broad, broad principles. As those of you um, who were here in the town hall last week, or those of you who've been looking at the uh, communications to campus, we are moving more quickly to move to in-person classes. And what does that mean for you as an individual? Well, it depends a little bit as to whether your course in the Office of the Registrar is already listed to be online or in-person. So check with your school, what is the date when that course begins on an in-person mode. In some schools, such as Graduate School of Public Policy uh, and most graduate programs actually, students are generally speaking, um, attending classes in person starting already. For some of the big undergraduate classes, uh, such as in SEDS and SSH, some of the courses remain with the big lectures available in an online format and laboratories and practical sessions available on an in-person format. So it depends a little bit uh, what school you're in and what specific course you're talking about. So I won't obviously try and address individual cases because they'll need to be dealt with at the level of the school. But some of the other questions and related questions that have come up, uh, look, I thought I was going to be learning online and it's going to be difficult for me to come to campus in person for a range of reasons. It could be uh, medical reasons and not having ha you haven't had the chance to be vaccinated. Again, talk to your school, but generally speaking, the Risk Assessment Advisory Group has given us advice to say a very small proportion of students per classroom can be in a non-G1 category. So you'll recall that G1 is fully vaccinated 
Um, however, the risk assessment advisory groups say that we don't accept students in G5. And essentially that's the group that have a position where they don't choose to be vaccinated. That's not an acceptable position in our environment. But we know that a couple of people will be in that other um, intermediate group where for a range of reasons, for instance, they've just had COVID um, or they, you know, they haven't quite finished their, their second course yet. Some of those, a very small proportion, will be allowed to attend classes. But again, speak to your schools and make sure that you're, if you do have a legitimate reason uh, that you're not in that, that big G1 group, that your um, school knows that and that they can make arrangements accordingly. So that's, that's some of the broad principles. Um, one of the other specific questions that I can address, and that's it's a good question that came through from a student, and they noted the uh, message to that went to the website, and it's been through Telegram and some of the other student channels, and that is um, around 70% of classes will be in person. And they're not sure, does that refer to the 70% of classes that were available already on the Office of the Registrar System or 70% of classes generally? And the answer is 70% of classes generally will be available on in some kind of in-person mode. And, and you're asking which classes are those? And that depends on the school specific scenario. For instance, School of Mining and Geosciences, which has relatively small classes, is largely moving to in-person quite quickly. But some SEDs and some SSH classes will be um, a, a little bit blended. As I said, some lectures will remain online and some practical and laboratory sessions will be in person. Uh, again, talk to your schools, keep that communication open with your schools. And remember, if you're not G1 for very good reasons, you may have an opportunity to come to campus as long as your reasons are understood and accepted by the school and, and confirmed by the risk assessment advisory group. So that, that will be a very, very small proportion of people because obviously um, we know that this is a, a very contagious virus and we our aim as always is to keep the campus as safe as possible. Uh, so I'm just, I'm, I might leave it there. I'm sure there'll be more questions later, but I just wanted to draw your attention to some of the broad principles. And it's really just reinforcing the messages that you've received already. But thanks for those questions. And certainly at the end of um, this broad session, I'm happy to answer any specific questions as much as I can. Thank you. Rebecca, want to get... Rebecca, you are muted. Sorry, after all this time, sorry. Um, some of these are school specific. I'm gonna ask them in that way. So um, from uh, Graduate School of Education, it says, um, if students prefer to have online classes until the day that's submitting the qualifying exam, can the university and the school make these arrangements? DSC, anybody there? I think I saw somebody earlier. But I'm, but I'll move to the next question. Um. Okay. The other part of the well, yeah. Okay. Um. For SEDs, from a SED students, again, this is partly um health and safety, but as a your student, maybe you can speak to it more directly. What if I don't have vaccination? Will I be able to come to campus or do I have another option to stay online? Dean Tarasis or? Well, in general, without vaccination, you cannot enter the campus, but okay. it also depends on your particular circumstances. Uh, there will be some exceptional cases properly documented uh, and within reason, the school will try to accommodate, but do not count on this. The, the overall recommendation remains to get vaccinated as soon as possible. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, again, for SEDS, um, I'm a second year student without vaccine majoring in chemical and materials engineering. My questions are, what actions will the university take regarding students without the vaccine? Uh, almost half of my college life is spent online. 
I'm losing the most important. I think you just answered that. Uh, he has seasonal allergies and cannot and do not want to get the vaccine. Fortunately, I cannot confirm my allergies to the university. So this may be part SEDS and part health and safety. Um, yes, can I address the yes, issue of please. vaccination and vaccine and vaccination? So um, now we are, as we had from uh, uh, from the Vice Provost for Academic Affairs, we're moving towards a, a, an in-person delivery of, uh, of our um, semester. Um, therefore, uh, of course, we, we do need uh, uh, students who are fully vaccinated. And so in the G1 category, uh, like faculty as well, faculty and staff. In addition, we're also strongly encouraging all our faculty, staff, and students to receive a booster, booster shot, because now the boosters are free, uh, are available in, in in Kazakhstan. So, because we obviously we are now moving to in-person um, teaching and learning session, um, we uh, we should not discriminate against those students who generally cannot receive a vaccine. Um, so therefore, we need to make adjustment. We need to make adjustment and allow uh, those students who, for good, very good reason, uh, are not eligible to receive a vaccine to attend an in-person class, um, and not to. Uh, so basically, which they should not disadvantage. So what are the situations when uh, we will do that? Uh, first of all, if 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 a student are in the G two category. Uh, within three months from the remember G2 is when uh, uh, people have actually contracted uh, uh, COVID and are not eligible to receive a vaccine before three months after the, uh, the resolution of the infection. So this is a very good, a genuine reason. Uh, also uh, G4. So G4 are those, indi uh, those individuals who are not eligible to receive a vaccine because of medical contraindication. Um, now there are very few medical contraindication against vaccines. Um, when we talk about allergy, we're really talking about only severe allergic reaction, anaphylactic reaction to, uh, uh, to a vaccine, not just a, a little bit of itching or, or, or some uh, uh, mild symptoms. Uh, and obviously, this medical contraindication must be certified by the uh, by polyclinic and also uh, must be the, the certificate should be also checked and uh, and approved by uh, HSC. And then also the other category of G3. The G3 are those that actually are not fully vaccinated, but they will they will become G1. They will become G1 just because of the time uh, whether they receive only one dose or two doses. Uh, there is a limit, however, we've actually issued some guidelines. Uh, for faculty, students, staff returning to in-person uh, classes. And within one class, we, they, uh, schools can only have up to 10% of non-G1 student. So if the class, you have 50 students in the class, so they, they, they could be up to five non-G1 students in that group. Uh, there are some additional precautions for these non-G1 students because they will require to be tested weekly uh, rather than every two, every two, two weeks. Uh, they will have additional tests also. They will be tested with the PCR as well as the rapid antigen test. And they obviously, they need to limit the direct interaction with the rest of the class. Uh, let me pick up on this point, uh, Massimo, and say vaccination is important not only for the individual student, but also for the community. Since the university took the decision to move uh, in, a, in a planned fashion, of course, uh, to in-person instruction, and this was the desire of the students, we have to be cognizant of the responsibilities to our fellow students, to the faculty and the staff. The university has to protect the health and safety of everybody on campus. So it is not simply granting an exception or allowing unvaccinated students to come to the classrooms out of the goodness of our heart. Uh, in that classroom, students will interface with other students, they will interface with professors, various ages, various underlying conditions, and also staff that have been through a lot. I don't need to remind anybody in this group that uh, 
just said he has lost three faculty members to this terrible disease over the last year and a half. So this is uh, very serious and we have to take our responsibility very serious. Uh, social distancing, uh, wearing your mask in classroom or in the offices or in the public spaces of the school where you will interface with others, it is a must. And we will be very diligent in, in protecting the health and safety of everybody. Those of you that uh, feel that this will be taken lightly and that it's easy to violate the, the regime that will be imposed, um, please consider that we will be um, very, very strict and very, very direct. Uh, I think the university has uh, two or three strikes and you are out uh, with penalties that range uh, from uh, expulsion from the classroom to expulsion from the dormitories and the NU campus. Only if we work together, all of us, the entire community, we can make this happen. Otherwise, we will have a terrible problem in our hands and I'm certain that nobody wants that. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Pignatelli and Dr. Tarasas. Uh, the next one is for all of the schools that deal with internships. Many senior students took advantage of online learning in the last semester to take internship opportunities before graduation. Would it be possible to consider leaving online mode of learning for those students who have their internships activities that are not overlapping and, and affecting each other with online learning? It is a difficult question, uh, Rebecca, because uh, internship is one thing, uh, a, a full-time work arrangement is another thing. Uh, we will have to examine very carefully those cases. Uh, we have to make sure that these are really internship opportunities and not actual employment. And then on the very few cases that uh, there will be an issue, the school will be willing to help and find some kind of accommodation. But obviously we cannot make promises on a case by case basis. Any other deans want to speak into that? <laughs> what I, I'm going to make a suggestion that whatever school you're in, you talk about your specific situation with your specific dean. That is the best way to get the best answer you can get. A lot of you want an overarching answer, and there isn't one on something like internships. Talk to your dean, your advisor, about how to handle it. Okay? Um, can someone, this is, can someone, this is a master's student, can someone clarify how to get access to the lab for thesis work? Who should we send the PCR test to get access? What should we do to include us in security lists? Would the school register for us the PCR as it was in December, or do we register ourselves? How often should we take the test? Is there a protocol for these students? That is from a Newsom student, so. <laughs> okay, uh, because it is surprising. We have established procedures in place that have been working for the last couple of years. For the case of SEDS, for instance, you have to conduct online our senior lab co coordinator. Uh, the process is well established. Uh, you get an electronic answer. You know the time slot. Security is being informed automatically. So everything has been done. I think the student is not aware of the details, but uh, this is not an issue for anybody. I think the probably the student, I think is one of our students. The student is referring to the uh, a practical, a practical related to a, a graduation, to a project. Um, yeah, so basically the, the program director will organize the uh, testing. Uh, certainly in our school, this is what, uh, what is going to happen. Uh, the program director will organize the PCR testing. The student should not really, it's not a, a student responsibility uh, in our school. Okay. Yeah. From, from SSH perspective, the list of those students in those situations that require a thesis, experimental thesis for graduation have been identified. They have been put on a high priority list and they have been contacted by uh, the university to access campus and uh, dormitory if they are not there, if they're already in Astana, that's fine. And, and certainly to, uh, to um, the access to the laboratory itself, 
that is arranged by confirmation by the, the PI, the supervisor, that they really need uh, access to the laboratories. And then that is being granted. Uh, as the, Dean Turas has mentioned, it has to be done on uh, respecting the occupancy rate that is allowed. Therefore, there will be slots uh, of time that the PI in a particular lab will determine. But the process, again, is, uh, is already in place as well. Uh, I believe Yulai is on here. There are some questions about the Kazakh language requirement. Uh, is university planning on revisiting the curriculum for Kazakh language? The issue is uh, the university assumes that a graduate from Kazakhstan High School is educated enough to take academic Kazakh despite any prior le level. Kaz test that was conducted at admission does not reflect any difference in levels. Um, we are forced to take the courses despite the fact we do not know the language at the level that academic Kazakh requires. We do not even have the opportunity to take some basic Kazakh classes to achieve level sufficient for academic. Uh, so is Yulai here? I don't think he's here, uh, but I can I can respond to it. Okay. Um, so. Uh, Yes, the assumption is that students who are coming from uh, Kazakh language schools, uh, their, their language uh, abilities should be high enough to take uh, Kaz uh, 201, the academic Kazakh 1 class. But in rare occasions, it may be the case that students, uh, their language abilities are not quite that uh, advanced yet. And in which case, the, uh, um, they will be evaluated uh, by the department and then placed in the appropriate level. Um, we do offer basic Kazakh now uh, for those students who need uh, to start at a bit lower level of Kazakh language. And uh, we, ru we've, uh, we run that in the uh, summer, but um, starting in fall, we're hoping to run it uh, during fall, spring semester as well to, to help students uh, to catch up. So, um, the opportunity for the, these uh, students who are in Kazakh language class uh, schools to move down to uh, a different, a lower level of, of Kazakh language, it, it is possible. Um, you'd, you'd contact the department for a testing and uh, uh, we may then facilitate getting uh, these students into the appropriate class. Um, there was another question regarding taking advanced Kazakh classes yeah. in this summer. Um, unfortunately, um, during the pandemic, we have not been offering advanced Kazakh classes during the summer, uh, but we did before, uh, in the before times, and, uh, and we hope to do it again um, uh, starting this coming summer, um, hopefully. Uh, but uh, we now, we recognize that we need to run advanced Kazakh classes um, in the summer as well, and uh, the department will do that. So um, it's just a, a function of uh, the, the pandemic that we haven't been able to do it. Okay, thank you, Phil. Um, Robert Nobler from CPS. Uh, will NUFIP students also have offline courses this semester? Okay. Unfortunately, it is very extremely unlikely that we would be able to offer uh, in-person classes to new FIP students. And there are several reasons for that, but um, most understandably, not everybody is going to be able to be vaccinated. Not everybody is going to be able to, uh, for one reason or another. And you're in a group that needs to be uh, taught and work as a group. So we can't have you know, five, six people that are on campus and then the rest of your group mates, you know, another six, eight people who are online. We just don't have the facilities to be able to run that. Uh, so unless everybody would, would be able to come on, um, we won't be able to do that. And you need to remember that of all the students in this uh, town hall, all the students at NU right now, you have the greatest opportunity to spend the most time at the university because you've got four years ahead of you that you can be here at the university. Nobody else 
and this group probably has that opportunity. So consequently, they want to get the other students on campus as quickly as possible. And so they have the priority in order to get on. So if even if everything went really well and we started to be able to bring new FIP students on the campus, say after the midterm break, they would take maybe a week to process and then you'd have only three weeks of classes. It just isn't a reasonable um, way of doing things to imagine that. So I really think that there is, there is almost no chance of being able to do an in-person class in new FIP this year, unfortunately. And even if you were here and we thought, well, let's do tutorials, what, what we're being, what we found out is that the tutorials online are actually being more productive than in-person tutorials were in the past. So even if we go to, you know, next year and we're all in-person teaching, there's a good chance that the tutorials are going to be done online because they found that that has really been a an asset for the students and they're able to cover a lot more materials or looking at the computer. So all in all, um, you're not in the place that you want to be, but you're in a pretty good place. You've got a good future to look ahead to the next four years. And uh, what we're offering is, is something that is uh, working very well with what we're doing. And if you'll allow me, uh, Rebecca, I'll answer the other question that had to do with, with housing. Um, that can new FIP students be expected to come on? Basically, my answer about not having uh, classes in person will answer that question. So that um, you're really the only people from new FIP who will be able to apply for housing uh, and be considered are those that have extenuating circumstances. So that you go through the regular process as far as applying and providing your documents. Um, if if we're not going to have in-person classes, then the majority of people um, are not going to be considered to be brought on campus, but only if you have an extenuating circumstances. So thank you. Okay, thank you. I'm going to move to the health and safety questions now. So these are for uh, Dr. Pignatelli or Marat. Hello, could you please consider the issue of lack of information regarding self-isolation regulations for newly arriving students and for those who already live on campus. No one knows for sure how should current, if their roommate arrives, and arriving students self-isolate three days after arrival themselves, when to take a PCR RAT and what to do after results are available. Well, um, I think we need to uh, check and verify because the protocol, in fact, what you mentioned is exactly what, what we have. Is a protocol is a, is a self-isolation uh, for three days uh, if, if the students are fully vaccinated uh, in the G1, in G1 category. Uh, and then the test is done uh, by day three. We say by day three because it depends on uh, particularly if we, if we do a rapid antigen test, we need to have a certain number of students really to, uh, to, to run this uh, rapid test. Uh, so by day three, um, the, the student will be tested and with a rapid antigen test, if they are negative, uh, then that's at the end, the end of the self-isolation. Uh, and, uh, uh, and then obviously they can attend in-person classes. If they are positive for the rapid antigen test, they need to, they need to have a PCR uh, test um, uh, just to verify the, the result. Uh, I can see uh, Dr. Tavasov is actually is online as well. Uh, he can also clarify. And the protocol is the protocol, and uh, so. But um, uh, Marat, you can add uh, further mm -hmm. further clarification. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, good evening, uh, dear uh, students. Uh, thank you for your time. Uh, Yes, uh, I need to admit the fact that sometimes uh, the instructions might not be clear, uh, especially in the past, uh, during the previous week, uh, as uh, we had too many cases in January, uh, and uh, we had to uh, have the process of uh, rapid testing, uh, and temporarily uh, we conducted PCR. Marat, we're losing you. Yes. Mm -hmm. We can't hear you. Can you see me? Can you see me? Mur no. Can you see me? Right. 
we can't, we still can't hear you. Uh, it seems like everything is working. Now we can hear you. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Now we can't. <laughs> I apologize. Uh, let me check uh, what's going on. Yeah, we can yeah. hear you. Yeah. I think you need to lean in to your computer. <laughs> uh, okay. Okay. Give me then a uh, couple minutes. Uh, I will do that. And okay. Then mm -hmm. I'm sure the topic will come up again, so we'll go on. Okay. Next, will you provide? Will you be providing Nursultan residents without in-person classes? free PCR test to access the library? If not, why not? No, if uh, we already uh, announced this at the previous town hall meeting, that if the Nur Sultan resident uh, needs to attend in-person classes, uh, therefore uh, they need to have a PCR and the, and the school will, uh, will pay for this test. But we will not pay for library access. Correct. If the library access is actually required for the student to uh, study and to pro progress and study in the graduation, yes, we should pay for that as well. Okay. So they need to get with their dean if they require library access to yes. graduate. To graduate, okay. to progress and to graduate, yes. Yeah. Okay, so whoever wrote that, I hope you're listening. If you need library access to graduate, yeah. go to your dean. Okay, thank you. Uh, is it possible to do monthly PCR instead of weekly? How long will the frequency of PCR testing depend on the color of the area on campus? Is it possible to remove very frequent testing? It is very expensive for a Stana resident. So uh, I'm back. Uh, if you allow me. Good deal. Yeah, I hope you can hear me. And so I apologize for some technical issue. Uh, yes, thank you again, you. as I mentioned, for your time uh, uh, that you've uh, <clears throat> asking question uh, concerning uh, PCR and uh, rapid testing. Uh, just to clarify, uh, we have uh, two uh, testing in parallel at the moment uh, because the number of tests conducted uh, for a new communities a very huge. Uh, our center is very busy uh, morning time uh, on campus and in RDC as well. Uh, and that's why uh, we are also launched uh, rapid testing. Uh, and initially, uh, during the previous week, uh, we had to conduct uh, PCR testing uh, for students who arrived to campus. Uh, but now uh, we are uh, uh, made some changes and those who came to campus uh, with a PCR from the hometown, uh, they should be tested with a rapid test. Uh, and same time, uh, our HEC team can continue uh, with uh, monitoring uh, the, all the uh, PCR test and rapid test. And in case if uh, after three days, a rapid test shows a positive result, uh, we'll uh, proceed with the PCR test. Uh, as you might know, uh, rapid test is very sensitive test. Uh, and once we find any uh, positive result from rapid test, which uh, called uh, totally uh, ra rapid antigen testing, uh, we proceed with the PCR. PCR is the final test conducted uh, to confirm uh, coronavirus. Uh, concerning the frequency of testing, uh, in generally, we have too many cases. And of course, uh, our objective was to protect everyone on campus uh, and uh, everyone who's coming to campus, uh, our uh, colleagues, students, uh, those who go to athletic center. And that's why the frequency of testing was very, uh, uh, very high uh, every, every, every week. Everyone was asked to be tested. Uh, but now the situation is much better. Uh, and uh, from today, from uh, February 1st, the frequency of testing is uh, once per two uh, weeks. So every uh, uh, 14 days, uh, everyone who are living on campus should be tested. Uh, we'll uh, make some announcement. Uh, in fact, this information is available on the portal. You can check, uh, but in addition, we'll provide some guidance. Everyone who's coming to campus receives a message from Occupational Health Services um, for students. 
uh, with a clear direction uh, what everyone's supposed to do during this uh, uh, three days of self-isolation. Self-isolation means that uh, students and everyone on campus who live on campus should uh, minimize contact with uh, people. They should not come to class, to the lab, uh, just as a safety precautions. And of, only after we confirm that there is no any infection, uh, we allow uh, basically uh, residents uh, to uh, attend uh, classes, uh, go to gym, uh, and so on. Thank you. Okay. So that's good news for everybody. Once every two weeks. Yay. And that's, he said campus residents, but I'm assuming that is also for students who want access to campus, to the library, or other places. So, yes, that's correct. Uh, there we go. Okay. Good deal. Um, okay, that one. Would Nursultan residents who have in person classes and are in G3, two, or G3, one groups be given access to campus or only G1? Um, We've already answered that question. Yeah. yeah so, if they need yeah. to answer, uh, yeah. There is a there is a limit, no more than ten percent of the in the class uh, can be okay. non non G one. Okay. What steps will be taken to further educate students without the vaccine? Why does the university require certificate O two six from the polyclinic in the place of residence when there is no such obligation on the part of the state? If I've been insured at a private clinic since birth. The do doctors at the clinic know everything about my health and have the documents. Why can't I submit a medical for certificate from that clinic? I think Marat can mm -hmm. answer that yes. question. Uh, yeah. uh, yes, thank you for your question. Concerning the certificate, uh, first of all, uh, currently, as you know, uh, contradiction uh, vaccination uh, in order to uh, let's say, uh, not to get uh, vaccinated, there should be a very serious reason. That relates um, maybe some uh, very uh, serious uh, chronic diseases, uh, some oncology, some autoimmune uh, infection uh, disorders, uh, some allergy, very severe allergy. Uh, so it's not always uh, uh, clear maybe for any uh, one uh, single specialist uh, to find out what was the reason. That's why only polyclinic uh, should uh, issue uh, such uh, uh, medical letter uh, with a, uh, open consultation with specialist. And of course, uh, uh, such people uh, needs to be monitored uh, at polyclinic uh, for additional testing. Uh, it's not just uh, having a medical contraindication and just forget about vaccination and the medical clinic. It's all about uh, continuous uh, medical surveillance uh, for a long period of time. And in Kazakhstan, uh, all these uh, services provided by polyclinic, uh, primary health care uh, services, or how we call it in Russian, PMSP, uh, medical uh, center That's why uh, there is a special form, uh, which is uh, introduced by Ministry of Health, uh, and which we need to follow, uh, and uh, provide as evidence that uh, the person is uh, examined properly uh, and uh, remain under uh, medical observation. Thank you. And uh, for those who live on campus, that all the services provided uh, at University Health Center. Okay. Thank you. Now moving on. Uh, the rest of these are for student services. They're about housing, about access to campus. Uh, I have a question regarding dormitory accommodation. I was approved for accommodation in December but I did not apply as a student with an extenuating case. At the last town hall meeting, uh, it was presented, I noticed that CPS students will return to campus only after spring break. Is this statement applicable for students like me who also received an approval for dormitory? This is a CPS student. So dear colleagues, um, let me answer this question. Good, after, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Yezhan Kanye, and I'm manager of uh, Department of Student Services, and I'm responsible for student housing. 
So uh, CPS students, yes, your applications were uh, reviewed by the task force last week. And uh, as stated by uh, Dr. Dobler, uh, 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 your, you don't need to be on campus right now. So, but if you have an extenuating case, really extenuating case, special case, you may apply to the student housing and we will review your uh, applications properly uh, by the task force. So thank you. Okay. Uh, could you kindly tell if there would be possibility for relocation for those who came at the beginning of the semester? Okay. I'm not sure. So, yeah. yeah. So relocation process will take place. However, uh, we should first uh, accommodate all the students. So uh, maybe um, at, at the end of the February, we will uh, we'll make a relocation for students who, who are residing on campus. Thank you. Okay. Uh, when will first year students that have offline classes and never lived on campus, but were approved to reside on campus in December, when will they receive check-in dates? Um, so for approved students, uh, only for approved students in December and who have offline classes, uh, they will receive hopefully this week uh, after the approval with the task force members or at the beginning of the next week. So please uh, wait for our uh, email. Thank you. Okay. I am a NUFIC student. I'm 18 fully vaccinated SVC student. I've applied to dormitory as an extenuating case in December and I've been approved. However, the accommodation was canceled at that time due to the unstable state of the country. I applied again in January, but was denied. I didn't have the opportunity to study in my hometown due to unstable internet and occasional power outages. So I had to live with relatives. I'm not gonna go into their personal issues. I uh, do not have enough space. Can't I be placed in a dormitory? So uh, as I stated, uh, we uh, we are still receiving the applications from extenuating cases. So please uh, email us with, uh, with the explanation of your situation and with the uh, clear justification and supporting documents. Please email to student housing and we will uh, consider your case during the task force meeting. Thank you. Okay. And, and there's a few more about extenuating circumstances with new fit. So that's what we're saying to all of them, right? You're done. Yes. Yeah, send it on in and it'll be yeah. dealt with. But it's kind of second priority right now. Okay. Uh, yes. Rebecca, can I just also clarify because I, I, I uh -huh. chair the I chair this task force uh, together with uh, Kadisha uh, Dairova. Uh, now, extenuating uh, cases should be really exceptional cases. So it's not the way to apply through extended it as an extended case to get, come back to the campus earlier, perhaps before the academic to be included in the academic reason. And this is why we require quite an extensive documentation and evidence to support the um, statement made by the by, by, by the applicant. So it, it, it so it's very difficult, it's very challenging actually to to get approval. Um, unless the student uh, really is able to provide all the documentation that uh, that we with, that we require. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, the only question outstanding from the Google spreadsheet is one about graduation. <laughs> I'll take that one. Basically, we've not made a decision about this year's graduation. For the past two years, we've made decisions, had to change them. Uh, there will be a graduation. I haven't talked about this with President Katsu yet. Um, we will do them. We will send this out as soon as we can. There, We've been too busy with other things, I'll be honest, to actually meet on this. But we will be meeting with it, and we'll get you word on it as soon as we can. But there will be a ceremony of some kind, somewhere, hopefully live. I said, hopefully, that was not a promise. Um, President Katsu has joined us. President Katsu, do you have any comments? Hello. Uh, sorry, I just joined uh, a few minutes ago. Uh, I'm severely jet lagged, but I hope uh, uh, you all bear with me. Um, 
glad to see you all. I listened into some of the responses, so to me they made a lot of sense, so that's good. I just want to maybe pick up a little bit on the graduation uh, question, because I think uh, for, for our fourth year students and second year masters and, you know, graduating PhDs, this is, starts to be maybe at the center of the, of the, of your respective, you know, interests. Um, as, as, uh, uh, our, uh, Rebecca just indicated, uh, this year we will try to make it happen in person. Uh, and, and have as many people, you know, of, of the graduating cohort there. But as always, we say COVID permitting. Um, so we need to, again, uh, make sure that we take all the precautions um, and we will try to, to make it this year as exciting as possible. Now, I hope you will all understand that over the past two years, we sort of tried to, to experiment with, you know, a fully, uh, a fully... Uh, Online, virtual. Well, and, and also almost over-designed uh, mm -hmm. process versus last year, which uh, maintained a little bit the... Uh, ad hoc nature of a, of a life ceremony. Um, I am painfully aware that neither of them may satisfy everybody. And ultimately that as many people as possible would, would like to see, uh, you know, or would like to see a live, a real graduation ceremony. And we are very mindful of it. Uh, but please bear with us. Um, our, our uh, medical experts will tell us when we have the green light to really go full steam ahead. Um, and we will certainly try to contact the cohorting, uh, the cohorts, the graduating cohorts as soon as possible so that we get also your inputs into the design of the, of the ceremony, okay? Uh, otherwise, sorry that I joined late and uh, just listen to, to, as I said, the tail end of all the comments. Um, I just want to echo what, what Massimo indicated to on the campus residency. Extenuating means extenuating. Please bear that in mind, okay? Uh, otherwise, uh, tell us whether you like the questions or not. Uh, we're going to meet again in a week's time. And I look forward to seeing you then. Okay. Thank okay, you. Okay, we have a. Okay, thank you. We have about fifteen minutes left, I believe. Hold us. Um, we'll open up the chat. We'll take hands at this point, right? Hold us. I'll turn yes. it over to Hold Yeah, I know. Open the chat box for questions from students. Also, please, students, raise your hands so that we can know you are you, you are going to raise a live question. So the chat is Let now. Let me open. just make a statement here before we go on. If the question's been asked, don't ask it again, thinking that the answer will change because you did it. The answers can't change. So please come up with new, unique questions. Okay, surprise us. All right, uh, I'll start with uh, Qasim Khan, Nur Mohamed, mm. please. Good evening. Um, Good evening. Uh, I'm already uh, receiving uh, questions from students who are uh, attending this, uh, uh, let's see, town hall meeting. Uh, Loretta, you mentioned that G1, G3, and G4 uh, students, some uh, small racial students, can uh, attend uh, in-person classes. My question is, uh, can they be allowed to accommodate, I mean, to live on campus, some ratio of non Thanks. Thanks, Kazim Khan. That's a good question. I think I'd like to leave that to Massimo and Marat to answer more definitively, if you don't mind. Yes. Uh, yes, I mean, uh, I think go back to what we're saying. If the student is required to 
uh, attend um, in-person classes. Obviously, we need to give the student the, all the opportunity to do so. Uh, and if there and if there is a genuine re reason to require campus accommodation, obviously we will consider those uh, uh, those cases as well. Thank you. My second uh, question, um, two issues. Uh, uh, we have some cases where students arrive uh, to Astana with positive uh, PCR test result. And thanks to health and safety department, some of them uh, are allowed to uh, undergo quarantine on campus, but some of the students uh, get denials. Can we put these cases into the protocol so so it could be unique to all students and uh, allow them to live on campus and undergo uh, quarantine on campus? Because when they arrive, Astana, Nur Sultan, and they are under stress because they are not allowed to accommodate and they need to find some place to for self-isolation by themselves. Yeah, if, if you allow me to answer this uh, question. <clears throat> yeah, uh, first of all, uh, I think it's very uh, straightforward uh, concerning the instructions sent to everyone uh, who was approved uh, for accommodation on campus that they need to take uh, PCR at their home and get the results uh, in their hands, a ready result, not just passing test and boarding plane. Uh, I don't know why, how we should write, which language we should use, uh, but I personally saw the message uh, sent to all students, which clearly states that uh, please make sure that you get result, negative result, uh, before you depart from your hometown. Unfortunately, some students continue to uh, pose a risk for travelers. Uh, it's not acceptable, as you can understand from the public health, uh, health safety perspective uh, for everyone whom you, are who, whom you may travel with. And of course, uh, those students who came to Nur Sultan uh, and they don't have any uh, uh, place to live, uh, to stay, uh, they're in a very uh, difficult situation. Uh, we certainly uh, consider uh, the case uh, and allow. Uh, but again, uh, we encourage everyone to get result before uh, boarding. Uh, Kasim Khan, if you have the list of students uh, who came uh, with a positive, uh, let's revise, because unfortunately today we again have a couple of several question, uh, cases uh, who came to North Sudan with a positive result. And of course, uh, we understand all the challenges. Uh, we're human as well. Uh, uh, and uh, but it's uh, just lack of uh, responsibility. I mean, you uh, those people just pose additional risk for others whom they travel with. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Marat. And one more thing uh, from my side. Uh, you mentioned the protocol. Uh, I mean, uh, step by step. Uh, I would be glad uh, if you create some well-designed uh, graphical uh, image or I mean, infographic with infographics with all steps of protocol, with PCR, rat tests, and et cetera. And I would be glad to, uh, how to say, uh, to distribute this kind of information to our students, if it's possible. Thank you very much. As, lo as long as students uh, and everyone is uh, look at this graph, to be honest, sometimes uh, students don't pay attention to email, to any graphs. We have many cases when people even don't understand uh, that they sent a certain message it's not a matter of the graph of graphics, it's a matter of attention. Just pay attention to the messages. It doesn't matter which form it might have, a written form or in a graphic form. People need to pay attention, uh, whether from the town hall, whether from um, uh, email, uh, from portal. Uh, and uh, we should be careful and be attentive because we are living in one society and should respect and communicate uh, improve our communication. Thank you. Marat, I would be glad to help you to make students to read these uh, infographs. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kasum Khan. Actually, so the, the last protocol was very brief and written, very precise in, and written in clear language. Mm. And we ask all advisors at schools to help students 
and get them read the text. And dear students, please read emails. They are very important from the university. Of course, we can uh, reformat it in any way you like. But I think all of you read English and English speakers. We can send in three languages if you want. But please read emails. The protocol is written in clear, good English. Very understandable. Thank mm -hmm. you. And so can I also add something to, about traveling? Also, if you travel by bus, by car, by train, please wait for the result of your PCR uh, test before you start your journey. You must have your, you must know that you are negative before you start your journey to Nur Sultan. Whether it's by plane or it's by plane, you, you must, uh, is, is probably uh, is a requirement anyway. Uh, but um, from the road. But definitely also if you travel by car, by, by bus or by train, don't start your journey if you don't have the results back. All right. Thank you, colleagues, for your replies. Uh, next, and please, students, make sure that you are not going to repeat the same question that was addressing the uh, before you. So please, please uh, make sure that you're not going to repeat the same question. Halmat Mahmoud, please, Halmat. Hello, everyone, and thank you for your efforts. Um, I have a question regarding the new protocol for uh, uh, self-isolation. As I understood that after uh, three days of rat test, if you test negative, you can have access to library and other facilities. Uh, I came from Iraq like four, years ago, four days ago, sorry, and I had a PCR test yesterday, uh, sorry, a rat test yesterday, and it was negative, but I was informed verbally, yet I have not received any like email for confirming that. So how can I, uh, you know, confirm that I'm negative? So this is kind of issue. Those who get, you know, rat test, they need to have a confirmation. Thank you. May, may I answer this question? Uh, just from yesterday, we started sent messages uh, for those students who passed uh, the rapid test that they can, uh, that the result are negative. Uh, it means that uh, they can definitely leave uh, the room uh, and uh, interact with others, uh, go to any public places. In case if we have any positive, we will contact those people, uh, contact and uh, proceed with the PCR. Uh, for instance, today we had uh, two cases uh, and we, yeah, we, uh, uh, we, we proceeded with the PCR uh, and uh, expect the result. And of course, during uh, this period, uh, people should stay uh, in their room until they get a result, uh, PCR result. Uh, concerning uh, your particular case, uh, uh, Hamad, uh, as you came from overseas, uh, you have a different conditions concerning the isolation uh, at the moment. Uh, it should be one week. Uh, so once we complete uh, with the rapid test uh, on day seven, you'll need to be tested with the PCR again. Uh, as a precautions, uh, because we are not quite sure yet uh, how the virus is circulating and if we have any other additional strain and so on uh, as, as a precautions. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right, um, moving on, LB said bye. Good evening, everyone. So my question is about academy uh, dormitory for the NUFIP students. Well, I've applied to a dormitory as an extenuating case the last week. And last week, uh, the managers from dormitory told, told me that uh, the extenuating cases were postponed uh, about like reviewing them. Uh, however, I re received rejection. But uh, as I know, my application was not even reviewed by task force. And the next uh, question is about uh, the NUFIP students as well. There are a lot of NUFIP students who have like social vulnerable status approved as well as facing some problems in their like home to study. And I I I'm suggesting to create a, some kind of like priority group for the NUFIP students with extenuating cases, maybe a little part of them to get into the campus. Yeah, I understand that we don't have any uh, offline classes, but anyway, like studying at hard situation at home, like uh, negatively affects on the, uh, like their education as well as a mental condition. Thank you. 
Dear colleagues, let me answer to this question. Uh, Alibi, uh, your application was reviewed and you have already received the rejection of your application. Your application was thoroughly reviewed by the task force members and the answer, uh, answer is the rejection, as I said. So uh, if you want to um, somehow to be reconsidered, you may, um, you may apply again and explain your situation uh, maybe in different way. So with the supporting documents. So please uh, email us again and we will try to assist you properly. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jean. Uh, next is Diaz Kasmakunov. Please, Diaz, let us know your question. Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. And my question is related with safety. I'm not vaccinated and I cannot get the vaccine because of my post-COVID issues. Two days ago, I was diagnosed with acute bronchitis as a result of COVID. And it is said in this lecture that it is allowed to attend in-person classes for unvaccinated groups that have health issues. So question is, are we going to expose these groups to get infected with COVID? It's okay when the G1 groups participate in in-person classes since they have protection as vaccines. I believe that attending in-person classes without full recovery and proper vaccination is too risky, uh, while the numbers of infected people is surging in North Sultan. Like we should consider Omicron is differently because it has high transmissibility. So it's obvious that our university considers safety as a priority. These groups don't need special online lectures, only materials such as books are enough to prepare for the exams. Maybe it is better to keep online education for these risky groups for safety reasons, at least for this semester. Okay, perhaps I will start answering uh, this question then perhaps Marat can also follow. Uh, now, uh, first of all, we need to, uh, I, I, um, be, be very clear that, uh, first of all, thank you for the question. It's very important that we that would give me the opportunity to clarify a few points. Uh, first, first of all, only those students who actually uh, are able to uh, attend in-person classes, not because, because they've actually re uh, recovered, you know, they have no symptoms, they have no complication. And because obviously if somebody is uh, unwell, uh, he or she should not, uh, you know, should take some leave of absence uh, for, for medical reasons. So here we are really talking about only those uh, students who genuinely are unable to be vaccinated, but they help, but, but they are well, you know, they are they are well and, and they are able to attend classes in person. And obviously, the decision uh, to deliver a, a, a person in, uh, a, um, a class in person has been made by the uh, school, uh, considering the educational needs of these of all students. Um, uh, because you know you're not we're not going back to 100 percent on offline immediately we're, we're going to prioritize as also uh, um, required by the minister of health and education and science uh, so online lectures still deliver online and small group teaching small group tutorials the practicals lab, lab practicals obviously uh, they cannot be delivered online uh, anymore uh, so we are really talking about this this specific uh, teaching and learning session in person, and also students who are well to attend these classes. And, uh, and this is why we really we consider a very small proportion of students, small number of students who are genuinely unable to be vaccinated exactly in you know, G2, uh, because they are, they've actually recovered from COVID, uh, they are negative, uh, by PCR negative, but they need to wait three months before receiving the vaccination. Or the other group of uh, those uh, students who are in G4 with a medical contraindication because they perhaps had some very severe uh, allergic reaction uh, to a vaccine. And therefore they are not eligible to, to receive a vaccine. But we, we actually uh, they define this threshold of 10%, no more than 10% of non-G1 students that could be in the classroom, really because the, you know, because of the principle of herd immunity. I don't know if you heard about that. 
So the, if, you, if you have a small number of unvaccinated individuals within a large community, a, group of, a large group of individuals who are fully vaccinated, the fully vaccinated will be able to protect those few individuals who cannot be vaccinated. So really, as I said, the, first of all, the requirement to in-person classes yeah, in order to uh, progress in the studies and graduate. And that is made by the school decision. And then the, uh, obviously the requirement of those, those students to attend the in-person classes with the appropriate precaution. Uh, and Marat can also perhaps add some further clarification for clarification to this. Yes, uh, thank you uh, for clarifying, Asma. Uh, from my point, uh, from my side, I want to add that uh, people should not uh, refer to the uh, high titer of antibodies, uh, because a high titer of antibodies is not vaccination. Vaccination has a different uh, mechanism uh, to develop immunity in the body, and uh, it uh, definitely cannot uh, reproduce it, uh, let's say. Uh, so everyone who uh, had uh, even COVID in the past should be vaccinated after three months. Previously, it was uh, six months, uh, but now uh, the guidance is very clear. Uh, it's an international practice, not just in Kazakhstan, uh, but in some other countries, uh, three months is a sufficient period uh, after COVID uh, when a vaccination can be uh, administered uh, uh, if it's interrupted, let's say. Uh, it applies uh, also for revaccination. Unfortunately, we had many cases, um, even uh, Juwan, uh, who suffered with the COVID because uh, the strain is different and uh, there, there was some likelihood that those people uh, would be infected and it happened, in fact. Uh, and uh, after three months, everyone who had COVID uh, and uh, even they are vaccinated, they should proceed with the revaccination uh, sometime uh, in May, uh, in uh, April. Uh, some other news concerning campus residents, uh, we agreed with the vaccination uh, on campus. Uh, it will be provided soon. Uh, we, we are defining the schedule, uh, mainly it was conducted in RDC, Republican Diagnosis Center, and uh, Abu Dhabi Plaza and some other uh, places around the city. Uh, but uh, at UHC, we are planning to have it on uh, Thursday afternoon. Uh, we cannot do it in the morning because of the testing, uh, but uh, Thursday afternoon it might work. Uh, we'll announce this later. Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, next in the queue, uh, at the big channel. If I can interrupt just a minute, we can take about six more questions. Okay, and then we're already past time. So let's take the ones with their hands up and then we're gonna have to close it out. Okay, thank you. All right, got a big shout out, please. Um, yeah, thank you, hi dear all. Uh, I'm a third year uh, student and I received, so my question is for student housing. I received a uh, dormitory confirmation in December and this semester I'm having a, an offline class and which is going to start in 14th of February, but yeah, I didn't receive still a check-in date. So I really understand the pressure on uh, student housing, but is it real that uh, I will receive the check-in date like before 10th of that February so that I will arrive in campus and stay for three days of quarantine and can be in like, in class in 14th of February. Uh, can I perhaps answer the question and then, uh, um, so we, uh, yeah, for the 14th of February, we, are, we asked all schools to provide the list of students who, re, who required uh, to access, in, you know, to, uh, we, we will return to in-person classes on, uh, on the 14th of February. So I suggest that if you have, uh, and we're basically we're going through this list, uh, uh, asking the student to come back and uh, and, and clarify the check-in. Uh, I suggest that you you contact your school just to make sure that you are on uh, on that on that list that we received. Uh, for, uh, the DSS actually received uh, uh, a few weeks ago. Which school is uh, Kadebek in? Kadebek, which school? 
Uh, yeah, sorry, I was muted. I'm uh, in computer science, school of engineering and digital science. Okay. And yeah, but the course is like math course. This is a science course, so SSH course. And professor said like it will be offline and it, it will start in like 14th of February. Okay, I think that we have but, talked to uh, uh, I think, uh, SSH, yeah. yeah. So, so, so the list of uh, students from SSH who are registered for uh, in-person classes has been sent, but uh, I'll make sure since you are a said student, just to make sure that you have not sort of fallen through the crack. So I'll make a note and, uh, and try to find out if, uh, if you are on that list or not. But certainly you should uh, be allowed to return. To return, yes. Okay. And yeah. on our side, we will also uh, check our list, the list we have received. Yerzhen? Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, I wrote student housing, but I think uh, due to the huge number of emails, I didn't receive the uh, answer. And uh, so one like question is, if, for example, someone applied in December and didn't receive any information about like confirmation and rejection either, and if he or she has like uh, offline class this semester, which is also going to start on in like 14th of February, uh, will it be uh, valid for them too, like receiving check-in day? Uh, so uh, if you will be in the list provided by the school, you will receive it uh, this week or next week before your uh, before the start of the, the lectures. So. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, next one is Nabi Arsta. Uh, thank you. And uh, I'm a student of uh, MPH first year. And uh, I have uh, two questions. Uh, my first question, uh, some students who have uh, infected children, uh, they uh, cannot visit uh, in-person uh, classes. Uh, because uh, they uh, stay in quarantine. Uh, what should uh, they do in this case? Uh, uh, what uh, kind of documents uh, they uh, should uh, provide? Uh, and uh, sec my second question, um, uh, is it possible to provide uh, online uh, classes uh, to students who uh, stay in quarantine? Thank you. Sorry, can I, since you are in PH, I, I, will, I will answer this question. Uh, so are you saying that uh, you are in quarantine because your children are positive? Is that? Yes, yes, because uh, uh, she uh, cannot uh, visit school and so parents uh, should to, uh, stay uh, at home in this time. Yeah, but that, that, that is a different, uh, a different uh, situation now. I think we, uh, you probably know that we've, uh, we're actually asking uh, all our students to be in the Sultan City to uh, obviously, if, they are, um, if, that, if their class is actually delivered in person, they, they must be, they, 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 must, they must attend the, all, all their classes in person. Uh, this is an individual circumstance that uh, you can write to me separately, but it's not a quarantine. Uh, that is um, it's a different issue. Um, so the you know the, because obviously all students are fully vaccinated you know as we, as we, we there, is a, there is a requirement uh, only if you are a close contact uh, and if even with a new decree if you are fully vaccinated without symptoms you don't need to be uh, full, you don't need to be isolated if you're a close contact um, uh, only if you are infected positive with positive PCR you need to uh, um, you, you need to isolate. Yeah, here's a second question. Yes. Maybe was the second question again? Uh, my, my, my second question, uh, is it possible to provide uh, online classes to students who uh, stay in quarantine? Uh, no, we, we basically, we made the decision that all our classes, uh, easy classes are delivered online, uh, offline, sorry, in person. It, uh, we don't offer uh, an on. Uh, online or online class. Obviously, uh, if the, 
uh, if, if it's in, the, the student needs to, must be in must stay in quarantine because it's infected, it's positive. We have a protocol. There is a uh, there is a revised protocol. Uh, if it's asymptomatic, fully vaccinated, fully vaccinated. Actually, even if it's not fully vaccinated, as long as you're asymptomatic, uh, uh, they need to isolate for five days, and then uh, repeat the PCR. And if it's negative, then they return to in-person classes. So the isolation uh, could be as, sh as short as five days, one week. And if okay. I can just uh, reinforce that message uh, that in some uh, classes, instructors are setting up buddy systems amongst student groups so that if someone is ill, someone, you know, their buddies will make sure they get all the information they need. But as Massimo says, when we won't be doing parallel, both in person and uh, online, that's not something that the university is able to do. But certainly a buddy system will help just for that five days when yes. people are unable to come to class. Right, we have only a few minutes left, uh, three minutes. Uh, I think we can pick one last question. Uh, John Shekhebra, this is going to be the last question from the students. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, I have actually two questions. Uh, if I understand correctly, uh, I'm a third year student and uh, I have offline classes that were that was supposed to happen. Uh, if I understand correctly, uh, I, the list was already sent by schools uh, to this housing and I should receive the uh, like invitation uh, letter uh, next week. And my second question is about the Dean's list, uh, about when uh, Dean's list students how and uh, when uh, students will receive their dean's list this semester? Mm -hmm. who's, who's answering that question? <laughs> it, it might be helpful if we know what school that you're from, and then well, the appropriate what, yeah. dean might be able to answer specifically it, about things. Uh, I'm from SSH. Okay. Gonzalo, you have a customer. Yes. So, so um, if if you are a student from SSH, we'll proceed uh, as we normally do putting together the Dean's list. So you, you'll be notified as to when we have that uh, ready for you. So certainly you will not uh, lose out. So I'll just add that uh, most likely it'll happen uh, this month in February, probably towards the end of the month. Uh, same thing for SEDS. Uh, it will depend on whether the format will be online or not, but we will definitely have the physical uh, uh, certificates available in the school office for all the students to receive. And I think the first part of the question was about when you'll receive information about your housing. Is that correct? Uh, yes, exa uh, exactly. Uh, Asojan, you mean the invitation form for the accommodation? Uh, I mean, when I will receive the check-in date because uh, our instructor already said that the course will be uh, offline since February 14th mm -hmm. and it's only two weeks left. So, so okay. that's why I was concerned. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you are in the priority list, you will receive the email this week or the, the beginning of the next week. Okay. Yeah, I, I guess yeah, that was the last question and we can wrap this session up. Uh, Rebecca? Rebecca, yeah. Okay, Rebecca, uh, there, there are some, Rebecca, there are some questions on the on the chat. Would that be? I know. Uh, and I'm copying. I'm copying okay. them, and we'll okay. try to get them out to them. Um, okay. Maybe we'll do a FAQ and send it out. We promise that we never do it, but I'll follow up with that. Uh, okay. It's already on seven thirty, so we're over. Uh, 
a little, a little note over, but we're we're hitting the time. So I want to thank everybody. Can, 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 let, hold on, hold on, hold on. Can we? There okay. are three hands up. There are three hands up. Can we spend another well, ten minutes to do this? No. no yes, we shall. can, but there will be three more if when those three go down. No, no. I will promise three, only three. Okay. We'll okay. Go three. ahead, Old Josh. Okay. Okay. So okay, uh, there are three still going. I still well, back. No, yeah. So only yeah. three uh, seasons are going to be allowed here. Yeah. To, with the question. Gunnar, please. Thank you very much. Uh, I want to say that I am a student from the group who have lived in dormitory and and I have to check in, but uh, unfortunately my PCR, uh, PCR test was positive, so I stayed in my hometown. So uh, after my quarantine, can I apply for the dormitory once more? And if yes, how I do it? Also, I have an online classes, so there is um, no way uh, for me to attend one uh, in the 15th of February because I should quarantine, um, quarantine because of positive pizza, uh, positive test and three days uh, in the dormitory. So there is actually two questions. Uh, second one is how um, how it will affect for my like uh, attendance in the class. Guna, which school are you from? Uh, I'm from SSH, biology major. Sure, thank you. Uh, Phil, do you want to answer maybe the second part of that question? If someone's in quarantine, it will be just for five days, presumably. Uh, so there will be a mechanism by which students in quarantine will be able to receive information. Yeah, uh, happy to do that. Uh, we're, we're, uh, our faculty are used to having students who miss uh, uh, a few days, five days uh, a week. Um, and uh, there, are, there are ways that uh, these instructors will make sure that students get the information they need and uh, don't miss out on anything. So um, the issue isn't any more about quarantining. It's just uh, the standard procedure that we have for how to help students who miss a few days of classes. So um, it's not a problem. Your instructor uh, uh, will be able to help you. Uh, just uh, keep them updated as to uh, when you'll be uh, uh, able to return to class and how many classes, how many days you'll be missing. So that should not be a problem at all. Okay. Next question. Yes, and the next question is uh, from Asel and then and then Barbara. Yeah, was that the third student? I suppose Asel. Asel, please. Asel is muted. Uh, yes, yeah, yeah, I was uh, muted, sorry. So uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you very much for letting me uh, ask this question because I've been concerned about it for quite a while and I believe I've decided to raise this issue because I believe it's not only my individual, but also universal to those who have been living on campus. So uh, the, my concern is uh, about quarantine procedures for those students who arrived in February. Uh, because when they arrive on campus, they're supposed to self-isolate for three days. However, uh, in some rooms, students are already leaving. So that means that, uh, so I've, I've been informed that uh, when my roommate arrives, I, I have to self-isolate also. I have to stay in the room for those three days until uh, my uh, roommate uh, does a PCR test. So, uh, Actually, I, I don't agree with this procedure because I believe that this is unfair to those students who have already been living on campus because I think it puts uh, our well-being at risk. So uh, that's why I wanted just to bring this to attention of the university. Thank you. May, may I answer this question? <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, very apologize for the situation. Uh, in fact, uh, our plan was not uh, to do like uh, we have uh, at the moment, particularly in your case. Uh, definitely, those who are placed together should be tested same day, uh, and they should follow the same uh, period of uh, isolation uh, if it's required. 
uh, that's the reason why uh, when we discussed with the student housing, uh, we uh, requested to consider uh, possibility of relocation. So current student uh, could uh, live together if they stayed on campus. And those who are just arriving, uh, they uh, can be placed in a one room uh, as a newly arrived, uh, arrived student. Uh, but you can imagine all the logistics with this and the lack of room uh, which we have on campus. Uh, and as a temporary solution, uh, there was some suggestion uh, to address this particular issue like that. Uh, but let us uh, to revise uh, this uh, practice and come up with a different uh, proposal uh, to address your particular concern, uh, as you mentioned. Again, I apologize and uh, thank you for letting us know. Thank you. Thanks, uh, thanks, Marat. Right, and the last question. Uh, the last question, yes. Yeah, Badrhan Isim, Badrhan, please. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yeah, yes. Good evening, I have a couple of questions. First question is, could you provide a more accurate date of a proposed accommodation of those students who got an approved in December, but have fully online courses? Because information about this group of students is still uh, quite unclear. When we got accommodates and how? The second question is about extenuating case. So, is uh, often electricity outages concerned as an uh, extenuating case? Because on my street, there are very often power outages. However, more than half of my courses announced that this is not a proper excuse uh, without certificates confirming that. And uh, man attendance is mandatory and there are no makeup exams or quizzes. And um, by the way, uh, electricity on my street is provided by private organization, so I cannot take official certificates of power outages, only a spravka from head of that private organization confirming that there were outages some. Thank you. Who we'll answer okay. the first question? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, sure. So, Batrhan, uh those students who are who have only online classes should be in the last priority list and you will be accommodated but uh, as a last priority and um for your second question uh please provide everything you can uh, that supports your application and task force will consider your application so thank you okay thank even you very it, much even if it's from the private uh, private central or something Thank you. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Well, Rebecca. <laughs> Rebecca. Are we bringing it here? Yeah, okay. we're ready. Three. We've answered the three, yes. Well, there's one more though. Um... <laughs> well, you, I, I give my word. So as a three, where well, okay. you want one more? I beg. I beg. <laughs> Go ahead. I beg. All right, I beg. Hello. Uh, sorry for disturbing you. I wanted to ask about the format of midterm and final exams, if they are going to be conducted online or offline. I think you better talk to your to your school and your professor. It depends whether they are online or offline. If they are offline, I expect uh, the exams to be uh, offline. And if they are online, I'm sure the professor will come up with online uh, uh, exams for you. Okay, so it's not it's not a universal case. Okay, it will depend on the professors and your school. It, it's a good reminder that all students could should continue to liaise with their schools. The, the schools, schools yeah. have got a lot of the answers for them. So and and please keep the communication open from your side, from student side, just to make sure your instructors know exactly what your circumstances are. The more you communicate, the more everyone can help you. Thank you. I want to thank everybody, members of the panel, leadership, and students. Thank you. We are going to be doing this every week. So if we miss something, we'll do it next week. I've got the questions off the chat. Um, we'll do those maybe first next week if you don't get an answer before then. 
I think there are some takeaways here. Talk to your schools, number one. Talk to your schools, talk to your dean, your vice deans, when you have questions. Even if it's an NU related issue, your deans should know the answer. Uh, we've had lots of meetings that they, that they know and they understand. Uh, dorms, you gotta have a PCR test that's negative. As somebody said earlier, don't get on a plane, train or automobile unless you have a negative PCR. Uh, you, you put us in a bind and you put your peers in a bind if you arrive here expecting housing and you're positive. Uh, it's not fair for us to shove you away, but it's not right for you to shove your way in. So be careful in these really weird times. Uh, we're usually very nice people here. So give us that benefit of the doubt. Thank you very much. Um, Somebody's asking, can you name all representation by schools? Well, you know who your deans are? You know who the vice deans are? Um, I'll look in at that. Whoever just wrote that, it just popped up. I'll look into that to see if we can give you some contacts for this. They've been sent out. I'll try to do a comprehensive one, okay? Uh, but thank you for coming. We'll do a Google Sheet again next week. So please put your questions on Google Sheet. That way people have time to really think through them. So good night. Thank, Thank you very much. Good night. Take care. Bye. 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 Bye.